What's good, YouTube? This your boy Lane Man, and I'm back here with another reaction video slamming right now. I'm about to react to the Gorilla Killer, Earl Nelson. You feel me? And you already know what the serial killer files. You already know I love doing these type of reaction videos. Like you already know I love doing the forensic videos. You feel me? Like these are like one of my favorites to do. You feel me? I know a lot of y'all. I know like. A lot of people love me for the music reactions, you feel me? And I love doing the music reactions, you feel me? Like, don't get me wrong, you feel me? But I enjoy the forensic videos because, like, like the stories, and you feel me? Like, you get to see, like, and hear mo the most craziest and the most insane stories, you feel me? And, like, you get to realize, like, a lot of people, like, are, like, really got, like, sick ways, you feel me? So I enjoy these type of reactions you feel me and if y'all new over here y'all make sure to check out the music reactions you feel me and the forensic videos like this you feel me and the funny videos over here you feel me like we do it all over here you feel me and and if y'all new y'all make sure y'all hit that sub button too you feel me and let's get into this thing slime this that the gorilla killer earl nelson let's get it let's get into this thing slime let's go you feel me and I already know, y'all about to say, bro, that Lang, Lang is, bro, Lang, Lang, stay high. Y'all already know how I do it, you feel me? Y'all already know. I'm in the stars, you feel me? But let's get it. Let's go. A man so brutal, he was referred to as the Gorilla Killer. Today we discuss America's very first serial sex killer, Earl Nelson. Wow. Let's open the serial killer file. Born in San Francisco, California in 1897, Earl Leonard Nelson had anything but an easy upbringing. Just before the age of two, both his mother and father died of syphilis. Without any parents to support him, Earl was sent off to live with his grandparents in a strict and religious household that revolved around Pentecostal teachings. Once Earl was enrolled in school, it didn't take long until he was expelled for his troubled and rebellious manner towards his peers and professors. One afternoon, while playing with street children, Earl's bicycle collided with a streetcar, resulting in a serious head injury that left him in a coma for a total of six days. Mm. Doctors told his grandparents that due to the extent of Earl's injuries, he wasn't expected to make a full recovery. It was soon after his release from the hospital that things took a dark turn. Life would never be the same for Earl and the people around him. He began to experience excruciating headaches, moments of memory loss, while spiraling out of control with his erratic behavior that caused him to become violent. At the age of 14, his grandmother passed away. Due to developing problematic behavior, Earl's mourning grandfather sent him away to live with his aunt Lillian and her husband. It was at this age when he began to engage in criminal activity and was sentenced to two years in San Quentin State Prison in 1915 after attempting to break into a cabin he believed was abandoned. Wow. As a young adult, Earl had a short-lived enrollment in the Navy until he was eventually discharged and sent to the Napa State Mental Hospital for his unusual behavior. After realizing he did not belong in the mental institution, Earl escaped from his surroundings a total of three times until staff gave Gave up on capturing him shortly after his escape of wait a second so y'all telling me y'all gave up on somebody that y'all know got issues you feel me that you feel me in by what bro is saying you feel me like said when he got into that accident you feel me and like messed up his head like you feel me that is, that's honestly what where this stuff began you feel me and to me from then on I feel like bro should have got help from that point on. You feel me, like, like bro, y'all, y'all let y'all just was like, oh yeah, y'all like, bro, I don't, I don't get that. Like, y'all know he got issues. You feel me? Y'all know he got problems. You feel me? Like, y'all know he's in a danger to people with his actions that he's doing. You feel me? So, 
to me, y'all didn't do y'all job at that facility, mental hospital, whatever. Y'all didn't do y'all job. You feel me? And wow, that's that's crazy, bro. Of 21, Earl began engaging in sex crimes. He was noted to be a compulsive masturbator who eventually tried to molest a 12-year-old female named Mary Summers, but failed to do so when she screamed and had brought attention to him. Earl managed to get married after his time in the institution, but things soon became rocky. He would spend immense amounts of time away from home, especially at night. He would leave in one set of clothes and return in another. He'd sometimes be gone for days at a time and would try to deny he ever left when his wife confronted him. After he began threatening to kill her, she went to the authorities. He was committed once again to the Napa State Mental Hospital, where he continued to escape multiple times and was eventually... Bro, why do y'all keep sending him to the same hospital? And they just... you. Why would you do that? When they just did the first time, the first time, you feel me? Like they let bro go, y'all. Like y'all should have, y'all should have known better to send him back to the same place. Like that, like was already on some. We we gave up stuff. Like they obviously didn't care about bro. So why are you sending him back there? You feel me? And obviously he's gonna escape because he know the ins and outs about that place. Like he's gonna know how to finesse. You feel me? Like. What kind of, like, bro, what did the... Man. We just released in 1925. It was a year later in 1926 when Earl turned more violent and began his predatory rampage on vulnerable women. His first victim was Clara Newman, a 62-year-old woman who ran a boarding house in San Francisco on February 20th, 1926. Earl inquired information about a room he wished to rent when he strangled her and engaged in sex with her dead body. What? Within a matter of weeks after his first kill, he claimed the life of another landlady. Once people took note of the killing sprees, newspapers titled Earl as the Gorilla Killer because of the brutality of his killings. Once acquainted to killing, Earl felt more comfortable murdering older women who ran boarding houses. Once alone with the women, he'd engage his attack on them and strangle them to death. After attempting to hide the bodies of his victims, Earl would occasionally steal their jewelry and money. After renting out a room in Portland, Earl continued to satisfy his needs by traveling across multiple states in hopes of finding new victims. The brutal stranglings continued around many areas of the United States, such as Kansas City, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Detroit, Chicago, and eventually Earl made his way into Canada. It was at this time in 1927, Earl landed himself in Winnipeg, where he found his first victim, Lola Cohen, a teenager who was selling flowers. After enticing her back to his room, Earl killed Lola and decided to hide her body under his bed. Earl grew tired of the same... See, that's what I mean, bro. And if it wasn't for these... For them, for them, for for the people at the mental hospital he got sent to, if they didn't just let bro just run off, you feel me? If they would, honestly, if they would have just gave bro the real help that he needed from a little kid after that accident, bro, and really got him the treatment that he really needed, this would not even happen. You feel me? And and a lot y'all didn't do y'all job. You feel me? And then. And y'all let him escape. Y'all let him do this, and and y'all seen what he y'all y'all seen what he's doing. You feel me? And I don't care, bro. Got something wrong with him or none of that. He gets no sympathy, bro. You out here killing innocent people for no reason, and then, bro, you would, and then you out here having having uh, then you out here having sexual intercourse after they didn't after you didn't kill them. Like, bro, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, you really got problems, bro. You really like. You don't even deserve to be on this earth. You feel me? Y'all can say, bro, man, you're, you're being too fit. No, bro. Look what he's doing. You feel me? If he would have got the real help he needed, this would not even happen. You feel me? Like, for real. Teen and decided to change his target and ended up strangling and raping Emily Patterson, a young wife and mother who was later found decomposed under her own son's bed. The brutal murders horrified residents and a $1,500 reward was released equivalent to $20,000 in 2015 in hopes that they could capture the unknown killer. 
Just before fleeing from Winnipeg, Earl was apprehended by police due to witnesses notifying them of his suspicious behavior. He claimed his innocence by preaching himself as a religious man named Virgil Wilson. His deceiving manner caused the guards to leave him by himself, which allowed him to escape out of the jail, but he was recaptured the very next day. Just before Earl's trial on November 1st, 1927 in Manitoba, multiple witnesses from the United States came forward providing testimony against Earl for his previous murders. Evidence began piling up from witness accounts to clothing left at the scenes of the killings. Earl's lawyer attempted to portray Earl as an innocent man suffering from a mental condition who couldn't have been responsible for the estimated 22 killings. However, Earl had foolishly spoken with a constable days before his trial and confided in him, asking if he should plead insanity. The constable took the stand and testified regarding this. With this in hand, among all the other evidence, the jury had found Earl Nelson guilty for all murders he had been convicted of and he was sentenced to death on November 4th, 1927. Good. Bro, you deserved it. You was out here killing all these innocent girls and innocent people for no reason. That's what you get. You got what you deserve. And if y'all be like, Wayne, bro, you being too cruel. Bro, I don't, y'all can say whatever. But to me, he got what he deserved. You feel me? That's what you get. You feel me? Hmm. And Earl met his death at the end of a rope on January 13th, 1928. That's all in this file. And I'm going to end it right there, Slime. Like I said, y'all make sure y'all check out all these type of reactions on the channel. You feel me? I got a playlist for all the reactions that I do. You feel me? So y'all make sure to check out all of them. You feel me? And y'all make sure to check out the music reactions on the channel you feel me they're cracking over here you feel me we got obviously the forensic videos we got the funny videos like i said we got it all over here you feel me so y'all make sure to check them out you feel me and i'm gonna holler at y'all the next one slime i love y'all y'all stay safe one